Oh, oh no, nah, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I ain't seen nothing. Matter of fact, I'm blind in my left eye and 43% blind in my right eye. I don't see much of nothing. A matter of fact, I can't even see you, sir. There may be an ounce of sarcasm there, so I apologize for the sarcasm. You know, I, I want to have a respectful discussion here. But, but I thought it'd be helpful to point out that the only place in the Bible where we find the words faith and alone together is in James 2.24. And it says that we're not saved by faith alone. Now, the people that I've talked to that believe in the faith alone doctrine, they at least acknowledge this passage in some way. But usually their argument against it is that it talks about justification and not salvation. Their argument is that this text is about justification before men and not being saved before God. That it's about works being our evidence to others of our faith, but it's not saying that we're saved by works to God. And I'd argue that's not true, and that's not what James is trying to say at all. In fact, it's talking about what saves us. And I'll show you one evidence. Just look at the very question that James sets out to answer in this text in James 2 verse 14. He says, What is a prophet, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? And then he sets out to demonstrate how faith, a simple internal belief that there is a God and that there is a Jesus, does not save us. That it's an active, obedient faith that does. Just like the general goodwill towards men doesn't put a clothes on their back and feed them. Just like demons accepting the fact that there's a God, it doesn't save them. And do you suppose those demons were really concerned about their justification before men? Or do you suppose that they're more concerned about their justification before God? And I'd say that's pretty evident what that is. Or just like how Abraham offered up Isaac when God called him to do it. It was his faith working together with his works, and God was the one who justified him, and he was accounted righteous by God. And so just like Rahab, as she hid the spies and sent them out the other way, her faith in the God that she had heard about was working together with her works, and God saved her. The end of the march, those walls came down. The only house standing was her house. Now, I want you to understand, simply because I'm arguing against the faith alone doctrine does not mean that I'm saying we're not saved through faith. I think the scriptures make it very clear. We read that in places like Ephesians 2, verse 10, where he says, For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, and not of works, lest anyone should boast. Or Colossians 2.12, where it says, We are buried with Christ in baptism, in which we are raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And so how do, how do we work out the difference between Ephesians 2, that says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and James 2, which says we're justified by works and not faith only? And I think it's pretty simple. We're not saved by works that attempt to save ourselves. Like, if we could do anything about our lost condition and our sins, we'd have something to boast about. But we're saved by works as we are responding to God in our trust in Him and His works, like Colossians 2 verse 12 says. And so I hope that's helpful for you. Maybe just something to dwell on, something to think about. And maybe you disagree with me. Maybe I'm challenging your stance on that. But even if you disagree with me, make sure to comment down below. Let's have a respectful conversation about it. But no matter what stance you take, everybody have a great day. God bless.